Good day there viewers and welcome to another episode of How to Cut Gemstones. My name is Cliff, I'm a gem cutter from Southern Australia. My passion is cutting gems and prospecting for gems, mostly natural but in today's episode it's going to be a little bit different as I'll be faceting a synthetic gem and this particular gem is called YAG. So you're probably thinking what is YAG? Well YAG is an acronym for a synthetic gem called Yttrium Aluminium Garnet and it's a lab created gem that was first developed in the 1950s. Its primary application was in optics and laser technology but it turned out also to be a very convincing diamond simulant. Although YAG has garnet in its name, it's not related to garnet and it is a artificial gemstone with no natural counterpart. So YAG normally comes in the form of rods and those rods are cut from larger crystals called bulls which are produced in a furnace by the Zakrowski growth method. Now this is the normal method how YAG is usually created however this piece of YAG has been made by a totally different process. This type of YAG is grown by the horizontal directed crystallization method and it comes in the form of ingots rather than in rods. So this piece of YAG was sent to me by a European gentleman and I've never cut YAG before so I'm really happy to learn how to facet YAG. This is a totally new experience and he sent me some other pieces and some synthetic sapphire that is also made in a similar method. So I'll be cutting for this gentleman a particular gem that he requested, something that looked like a crucifix and I'm happy to do this for him because he was generous and kind enough to send me some of this material to facet. So this is something I'm really looking forward to in this video and hopefully I can do a really good job of cutting him a really nice gem. So before we start I should show you and the gentleman what type of design I'll be cutting. I think he would like to see this. So this particular design is shown to you on computer software called Gem Cut Studio. Gem Cut Studio is an application for people like myself who like to design their own gems and also if you have a design from someone else you can input all the angles and indexes and with this particular design called Angel Cross it's a design by a well-known gem cutter and gem designer called Jeff Graham. Sadly Jeff passed away quite a few years ago but he did leave us faceters a legacy of wonderful designs that we can all facet till this day many of which are still freely available on the internet or could be bought in a booklet form but I would rate Jeff up there with the top three faceters ever when it comes to faceting designs. He is very high on my list and highly regarded. So as you can see on this particular gem it's forming a crucifix on the crown. Now the gentleman who sent me this piece of YAG specifically requested that I facet a gem that had a crucifix design on it. So this is the one I've chosen. So hopefully he will enjoy it and thank you to Jeff for creating this particular design. So here is a computer representation of what the gem should look like once completed. I'm almost ready to start faceting but I should say before I start that YAG as a synthetic gem has a refractive index of 1.83 now that is very high indeed and no wonder it was considered to be a really good diamond simulant. Also this particular design requires that I use frosting on the crown to highlight the crucifix but I've decided to polish the entire crown because I believe when you have a gem of such a high refractive index when you start frosting it all you're going to do is impede all the scintillation coming up through the pavilion. So because I've never cut YAG before um, this is a totally new experience so I'm going to be a little bit under the pump because I've never cut this gem. I'm also cutting a design that I'm not familiar with 
and because this will have to be almost like a one-off attempt to get right because I'm faceting a gem for someone else and usually I don't facet for other people because things can actually go wrong they might send you a bit of rough and they want you to cut a sapphire and the sapphire might crumble apart during the process and you know you've cost them probably a three or four hundred piece of sapphire rough only because it probably was flawed in the first place so this is a new experience so I'll be using my traditional methods I'll be starting off as you can see just doing a quick preform rough out using 100 grit lap and then I'll migrate to a 600, 800 and then I'll pre-polish on copper laps so on the final polish I'll be using my tin lap with the 50,000 grit diamond compound I may need to switch up the oils because I've never polished on YAG so I don't know how the polishing is going to behave but in terms of oils I may switch up using a sewing machine oil one drop of that if that doesn't work I'll use the Herco valve oil and that'll be about five drops and as it starts to dry out just use more drops just to keep I guess um, the lubrication going because Herco valve oil dries out but it seems to be holding a different type of porosity with the diamond and it becomes more aggressive and it really uh, cuts through micro scratches for those people who've been watching my videos for a while you'll see that there is a common theme when it comes to cutting my gems and it doesn't matter whether they're synthetic gems or rough gems everything I cut and polish are done on topper laps, copper lap and a tin lap. I suggest to a lot of people start learning how to adjust the speed, the amount of oil and the amount of diamond compounds you use on the polishing and pre-polishing laps. And I know the manufacturers aren't going to like watching this video but I hope you do watch it. Watch carefully because I think you're misleading people with all these wonder products. They cost a fortune, they don't need to be, stick with the basics. So as you can see in the previous scenes the outline has been created with the topper laps. Now I'm moving on to just my one copper lap with an 8000 grit diamond compound getting the pre-polish done as you can see and then I'll move on to a final polish using the tin lap. So one of the things about using a copper lap they tend to blacken after a little while and you will need to clean them and I use WD-40 and just a bit of tissue paper and that will clean off all that black residue sometimes that black residue can start to scratch a gem when you've used it too much but sometimes it can also start to polish a gem depending on the type of material and you'll learn how to use the copper lap even with residue on it so here you can see I've done a pre-polish using a copper lap and I've used one drop of sewing machine oil and 8000 grit diamond and that's done a really good job. As you can see I'm doing the final polish and I've dug out Old Faithful, my tin lap. You've seen her many times on my videos and she works on every type of gem whether it's rough or synthetic. I found out that sewing machine oil wasn't quite as good as a Herco so I'm just switching oils using the 50,000 grit diamond compound using the right speed using a bit of feel and touch as the oil starts to dry out more I add a little bit more and this will cut through these micro scratches so use your head stop buying expensive laps learn how to adjust the amount of oil and the diamond powder it works every time I think it's a great way to save money as you can see the pavilion is now completely polished and it turned out really well onto faceting the crown in a moment and the crown will be a lot more difficult it has a lot of intricate meat points to get the crucifix to line up properly with the girdle outline and getting that table to get those meat points in will be a challenge as you can see here I'm on to the secondary transfer and then I'll facet the crown using the same sequence of laps in the same order from the topper laps all the way through to the final polish of the tin lap. Also I've created an online web store called GemQuest. I'll leave a link in the description area. 
I'll be selling some of the gems you see me cutting on YouTube. So many people have asked whether I could sell those gems. In the past I haven't, but I've decided that I should sell a few. I'm getting way too many gems. Uh, my wife can't possibly use them all. So maybe good that some people can buy some. Also I'll be selling some gem rough material. At the moment the market is aimed at Australia, but I will be selling my gems to the US, the UK, New Zealand and Canada. So check that out. To facet the crown I'll be using the same type of laps in the same order from the topper laps, copper pre-polished lap and then the final polish lap will be the tin lap. So this is the end of the narration and of course I have what I call the final reveal right at the end of this video where you get to see what this gem looks fully polished without any glue or a dop stick attached to it. So, in closing, I'd like to thank all my subscribers and regular followers. Thank you for taking the time to watch my videos and leaving comments. And so until next time, everybody, it's bye for now. I'll see you later.